What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video and today we're doing another freaking garage wash floor mat. What a shocker, right? What a stupid shocker. So my one complaint, my biggest complaint, kind of my only complaint with the uh, last floor mat was that it's just, it's just cumbersome to put away. I didn't like the way I designed it. It's my fault, totally my fault, but this one right here I ended up going with the 8 foot 6 inch by 20 um, 20 inches I think was the best bet even though this garage is like technically you know just perfect for the 18 version 20 would get me out of the garage a little bit which is kind of what I want for it to scooch out uh, the only complaint I have is these side things there's really not a whole lot I mean, if they were pushed up like this, I would have, I would have no issues whatsoever. Um, my truck's super dirty. I'm gonna just try this out. If I get a shitload of water on the floor, so be it. We're gonna see. I just don't know how this is gonna go. I guess we're gonna have to see. There's just, my fear is that there's gonna be certain parts like here where there's a little crease and it's just gonna flow off but I don't know um, it's a little bit uh, less in the width section compared to the other one I built so I just don't know how that's gonna work um, for overspray and whatnot but we're gonna pull this in Real quick I'm gonna show you how bad it is I mean it's super super bad we're gonna pull this in and I'll give you my impressions about what I think about this. Uh, just to do a disclaimer real quick, this is not meant for what I'm using it for. I think this is more one of those things where you live in an area where there's like bad weather or just winter in general. You keep this on the floor. So when I pull in with a vehicle that I've driven in the snow, mud, slush, whatever, as it dries and drips and dribbles, it collects it here instead of on the floor. So this is what that's for. So again, the height isn't supposed to be that way. It's not a flaw of the product. This is just us trying something. But let me show you the truck. Of course, it's very sunny out, so you're not gonna be able to see much of anything, but you can see, you know, salt accumulation. I don't even wanna really touch it, but it's all over the side of the truck. I mean, it's real, real, real bad. Um, the wheels. I mean, this is crazy. The back is the worst. This is like disgusting. I mean, this is completely dried on gunk. My exhaust tips. You have no idea how upsetting this is. This is a whole layer. I gotta get this off. So we're gonna we're gonna attend to that right now. So as far as fitting goes, we do fit. I'm not super comfortable <laughs> with how much room we have on the edges. The back, obviously, there's a lot more room, but I want to leave room so I can have this garage door closed. It's disgusting. I tried to center it as much as I could. Now I did have to back it up and pull it back in because the way I'm pulling in is gonna be different than you probably. I have to come in and then turn. So I bunched it a little bit, but then I backed out, went straight back in after I unbunched it and it was fine. Do have room here and we are safely there with some overlap. This truck, this is like, it's real bad, so rust should not stay. I gotta get it out. So we're gonna rinse this off and we'll see what happens. So I just rinsed off basically the wheel, wheel well, front panel, and the whole side, okay? This is kind of what we're left with so far. It's containing it. It is flowing down. It seemed like it was pulling up a little bit here. So again, my house is probably not on a perfect angle for this, 
but I'm gonna try to bunch it the right way. Another issue I could see possibly happening is obviously I'm not using a ton of ton of water, like I'm gonna flood the paint here and there, and especially at the end. I might have to cut the whole lip off of the end to make it so that there's a tail to get the hell out. Because um, I can only imagine it's gonna bunch, but if it bunches enough, it'll overflow it. I just don't want it to overflow back in. So this is what we're working with right now. Just giving you an update. All right, so uh, it changed. Everything changed. Life is all about making adjustments to the situations around you, right? Perfect. I did have an extra one of these tarps. Like I said, I caught this on sale. They were like eight or ten dollars each. Pretty large tarps. Good tarps. What I did was fold it in half with the outside edge here so no water could get into it. Tucked it a little bit underneath. And now my actual area for water droplets is contained here. Great. And then the flooding area is contained here. But what this did is it bunched up a tiny bit here and it lifted this up a little bit. So now it's giving me a little bit more of a ledge to keep the water in. And this is easy. I could put all this away. There's no pool noodles involved with this. So the way I have this where I could fold it and move it to the other side, slight bit more work, but we, uh, we can roll this, fold this in half when we're done, put this with the other mat, and now I've got one hell of a little storage situation. What I'll probably do is end up um, permanently attaching it, because this size is perfect. I can put it on the other side, I can keep it on this side. The front and back I don't need to really worry about like I do with this, but it gives me a little bit more room to spray vigorously. And if I'm getting a couple little droplets here and there, I'm not gonna stress too much. Uh, I did clean the front wheel, and I have got no spillage whatsoever, but I did notice when I was shooting the stream, a tiny water was coming at me. And on the other uh, on the other mat, we didn't have that problem because there was, I don't know, maybe another foot that it came out on either side. So this makes up for that greatly. This is definitely overkill. You absolutely don't need this. But again, like I said, everybody's garage is different. Everybody's situation is different. If you take inspiration from what I'm doing, then this is worth it. If not, I'm just rambling. Let's continue. All right, well, I finished wash. I didn't dry it yet. I'll do another quick walk around afterward, but I just wanted to show you all something. I did get water here, but the problem with my hose setup is when you turn it on, it does dribble a little toward the bottom. And when you turn it off, you see that dribble? That's what I'm dealing with here. Uh, like I said, my garage is different than everybody else's and everybody's garage is different from everybody else's. I have a porous type concrete, so I don't mind getting some water there. I do have a rug here. It's a indoor outdoor like rubberized base rug, so it doesn't matter if it gets wet, but I don't want it to get wet. At least not too much. So, this is what we got. If you see the water is steadily running out. Um it did pull a little bit in the back, but it did flow over fine. And uh I don't know. I, I'm just, I'm excited. Let me show you. This is how I would soak the car down at the end. Now I'm going full stream. Again, this is not a regular garden hose. This is a soaker. I believe it's from Adam's Polishes. And do you see how it splashes and comes over the edge just a little bit? That's where that extra security is. So I could lower the stream. And it is containing, I would say, 95% of the water. You see that coating still in full effect here. Um, so I just go through and basically soaking. I'm flooding the paint, and that's how I'm getting everything off. But so far, so good. Everything is doing what it's supposed to do. The truck's clean. And uh, in case you're wondering, there's a section of pool noodle there and pool noodle here. For whatever reason, my garage door is very powerful, and this here. This is not gonna stop the uh, pressure of it. It would shut completely. I need an opening. So I basically just put that there. It catches it just enough. And uh, it's worked out good. All right, guys and gals. That's it. This is the mess we're left with. Not much if you consider what the hell we just did in here. I mean, as you can see, 
I do have overspray on this side. I'm not even gonna lie. I got very lazy and I didn't even bother moving that tarp. So what I might do is get a second one or just cut that in half. That's probably the better bet here. Cut that in half and just put one strip there, one strip here. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Um, as you can see, she's uh, shining again. I just gotta give a little bit more of a wipe down now that I can reach certain spots. Uh, real quick, I just wanna show you this. This is what came with uh, the whole kit. It's like a foam setup. It's got like a little squeegee. So what I'm you know, gonna do is try this out. Apparently we could just, you know, squeegee most of the water out. I guess you could push it, but it's probably better to uh, pull it. Give me some chance. Uh, I guess you could, you could push it. You know, what you're gonna wanna do is get this mat as flat as possible. What I'm gonna do though, because that's kind of time consuming, is I'm just gonna lift this son of a bee up and let it drain out, and then I'll do the rest. You can see all the dirt that came off. So let me lift this up, let me see what's left, and um, we'll go from there. All right, that's it. So just in transparency, instead of lifting the floor mat up, I kept it as flat as humanly possible, it took the squeegee, and squeegeed as much off as I could. Um, I know this is a complete waste, but I was never gonna use this super drying towel on my car. I stick with the Adams uh, Ultra Plush, whatever it's called. That's the one that seems to work. So I used this towel and I mopped up pretty much 98%, I would say, of the water, rolled it up. Now, I could get smaller in our form factor here. I could have this much tighter. But as far as the storage I need, this is perfect. Now, mind you, this is the squeegee, the giant floor mat, the eight foot six inch by 20 inch, and the um, extra little tarp that I had on the side that I'm gonna cut in half and put on both sides. So that's it. It's, uh, it's as simple as that. Did it overflow? No. Did I have splashage? Yeah, I had a little splashage. Splashage? I did. So be mindful of that. Um, if you're outdoors and you live in a city that has water containment stuff, this might not be the, the mat for you. I would go with something with higher walls to really contain the water. I don't know if that's still in effect, but this is what we got. Do a quick walk around of, uh, of the car. Again, we're very clean today. Now, now we're very clean. This car is very thick and it's windy out. So we do have reflections. We've got a very clean vehicle. And as far as the mess goes, very limited. I did have, um, like I said, a little bit of water that splashed over. But remember I said, I do have a porous type floor, concrete floor. And look at it, it's already, for the most part, um, drying up. So my whole thing is keeping it off the drywall, which thank God I've got like a little bit of an elevated bottom area. That's awesome. So real quick, let's go over the uh, process since some people are going to ask what products and what I use and blah, blah, blah. So I do switch things up a lot. I do a lot of testing. Um, this vehicle was heavily salted, so I took Optimum No Rinse, put it in my foam gun on the hose. It made a bigger mess, but I was able to flood the paint with more soap, and it dwelled, and it was better. Two bucket wash method. Optimum Car Wash in the wash buckets. I go between Optimum Car Wash, Car Pro Reset, uh, Sonex. I use, you know, I don't know. I just try for different things. Wheel Cleaner, PNS Brake Buster. That's my go-to. I haven't really changed that in a hot minute. And I've got sprayers. Usually, whatever soap I'm using, I put in the sprayer so I can foam. Keep it extra lubricity. So, wash, told you. Now, for dry, this is my thing. 
Um, I've tried a lot of waterless washes slash drying aids. Now that I've got a coating, I want to stick with what's as little uh, stress as possible and stuff that's not going to put you know extra stuff on the paint as much. So I love this spray and wipe. It smells good. It seems to flash really fast. Doesn't leave a lot of streaks. So this was a very good thing. Um, and Grios Garage spray on car wash. For whatever reason, I use this uh, for the door jams. Um, engine bay because this does have some carnauba so I use that on like I said door jams engine bays the trunk tailgate so around the trims of that um, you know little various odds and ends uh, wheels anything that I have to use for a drying aid I use that with a separate rig most of the time a black cloth or one of my red ones for that uh, windows lately I've been using uh, clarify Seems to be working pretty well. Doesn't smell that great, but it is what it is. So that's it. Um, every other wash, I seem to use bead maker, but like I said, I go through a lot of products often. So I test, I test, I test. And as I figure out whether or not I like it or it works for my vehicle. Now again, for my vehicle, we're talking about my actual Trackhawk or my Tahoe or my wife's vehicle or my friend's vehicles. So if there's a need or a spot that this could fill for any of those, I keep it. And that's pretty much the gist of it when it comes to that. So that's it. That's all we got. This is the uh, cleanup. The floor, like I said, it's starting to dry up really good already. Over there, there's almost nothing. I'm gonna pull the track hawk back in, put some tire dressing on, and she's gonna hibernate for the next couple days because I gotta drive the Tahoe. I got a lot of weather coming that I'm not too keen on and you just wash the damn thing. Nah, not doing that. So anyway, if you're interested in this, like I said, the sidewalls are not optimal, but you could put the other mat there or put something against it, anything to bunch it a little bit. It'll give a good angle. It'll stand up. It'll give you the walls you need. Width wise, it's a slight bit of a letdown, but you know, to be able to put it away versus, let me show you, versus this mess, this freaking giant mess that I had. I know there's probably an easier way to fold it, but I didn't do it. It didn't uh, work out for me too well. I probably, like I said, could have put it together better, but I didn't. End of story. This is that mat. I'm going to put the link in the description below if you want to buy it. They do make a smaller one if you have a much less wide footprint. That one does come with an 18 foot length instead of 20. Um, if you're doing what I'm thinking, and if you're doing what I'm doing, I would recommend get as wide and as long as possible. It did go out. I don't need to cut in any way, shape, or form this because I feel like it's flooding. Uh, I don't think it's going to make a difference, and I, I kind of don't want to destroy it. So I'm going to keep on keeping on with this thing. I'm going to put this in the corner. I'll probably store that right here and uh, that's it I'm freeing up some space so yeah that's it she's shining like a goddamn diamond and uh, we're done so if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing if you are an OCD OG I appreciate you thank you so much for sticking around sorry the videos have been you know kind of wonky lately but it is what it is I don't make a living off of YouTube I have to prioritize so I film when I can but anyway, rambling aside, thank you so much. I appreciate you for sticking by if you have. If not, sorry to see you go. If you're coming back, welcome back. I'll see you guys on the next one. Have a good day.